so let's get into it. Tekken 8 had a, a thick update, a very massive update. Also a wide scale balance patch. People are still figuring out a brand new character that according to many seems really good, but we'll see. There's already some stuff that is like obviously really powerful in Tekken 8. I just need a moment to get my bearings because again, I have not been able to jump online into ranked in Tekken since like even a month before Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth because we had so many FF7 games. So I'm just trying to like bounce back and figure out what's going on because Tekken has actually changed a couple of times since then. And also a bunch of new stuff has been added, that of which I haven't even had an opportunity to see. So the first thing I wanna take a look at, because it also seems like, and it sounds like it's the worst shit ever is the battle pass. Everyone's saying extremely negative things about Tekken 8's battle pass. So I'm gonna fire up the game right now. There is one thing I have to mention before we get into this. For a very, very, very long time, the majority of Tekken 7's player base seemed to have a pretty big issue with Tekken 7 and it's that, dude, we want DLC costumes for this game. Where are they? Why aren't you putting them into the game? We kind of saw the exact same thing recently happened with Street Fighter 6, where SF6 is like, hey, we're finally putting costumes in the game. And people are just like, you dumbasses, we don't want this freak show costumes. We want character costumes. People are actually weirdly screaming and like wondering where the hell the DLC is. Who said that? Buddy, as somebody that covered Tekken since the beginning, and as Tekken 7, a game that really didn't get a whole bunch of additional DLC outside of just like seasonal stuff. Yes, people complained about that. People complained that there was no like classic costumes that you could add to the game from older games and stuff. It was an active complaint from the user base for a long period of time. And also, when are you adding more customization items? People bitched about it for years, for a very long time. And now there's even less customization items. And now there is seemingly new stuff in here. So that's what I wanna see. What the hell are we talking about with this battle pass? Hold on a second. Tekken Fight Pass. I played like matches against Kenny and Steve a couple of times. I've barely played online at all in over a month. So what the hell is this? A variety of rewards for playing the game. We saw the the presentation on this. Did go over the fact that there's a free one, which I guess I'm currently leveling up, and also the, the premium one. Okay, how rough is this? The first thing that caught my eye that somebody mentioned, the idea behind this is that you have to play the game in order to level up. And just like any battle pass, even myself who has barely ever bought a battle pass in games for the most part, to be real, I think I've purchased two. One was for Rumbleverse and one was for very early Street Fighter VI. And as soon as I realized, oh, the Street Fighter VI one doesn't give me anything for my characters, I kind of just stopped doing it. I did also buy Warzone stuff for Spawn and then I used them literally twice. But at the end of it, I think it rewards the majority of your Tekken coins back. Is that is that right or not right? I think there is, like most battle passes, if you play the game a whole bunch, um, they do end up giving you a whole bunch of these Tekken credits back for you to buy another fight pass. It's almost like, hey, you bought into this, thanks for buying into it sort of thing. It's like, okay. But I have to say, there is a very stark similarity between this and Street Fighter in many ways. The first one being, what the hell are, are these things? Like, why is nothing actually really good? That's my first criticism. Not even like the value and worth of it, because it's like, what, five bucks or something like that? Uh, it's six bucks. I think each hundred coins is like $9.99 or something like that. What's in there doesn't seem super great. There is like customization items, right? Yeah, there is customization items. You get it, right? I get it. The criticism I think overall between both of these games is that the rewards in themselves don't feel that great. As you look through this stuff, many of the customization items as you go through here are just things that were also in Tekken uh, 7. Like some of these jackets and shit like that is like, the, wait, this also, Hold on a second. This is for your avatar. Once again, more more freak accessories. Where's the one? It's one of these. As I'm going through here, I realize the majority of it's freaking avatar stuff. And I swear to God, this is a Tekken 7 costume. I swear to God. It might have obviously some updates, obviously some some little things here and there. But the, 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 the similarity between Street Fighter and, I'm sorry, Street Fighter 6 and this is that, yeah, the rewards aren't like that good it overall feels relatively like low effort street fighter especially because it's battle pass mostly affects your goddamn lobby avatar character and you have to play a whole bunch to eventually get to like the things that i think people want which is you know stuff like this it just doesn't seem that good right level 52 
Yeah, in Street Fighter, you can fight as your avatar and you can play single player content with it. I get it. All, all I'm saying is that like, it feels like relatively low effort. I don't feel like this is what people would be looking for from a battle pass in, in a fighting game. And now we've had like a couple examples of it where it's like, oh, we're seeing what, what's in these fighting game battle passes now that they're actually showing up because number one, it's taken a long time for them to actually show up in, in some fighting games. They're not that good. <laughs> like the free one offers some free stuff, sure, whatever. But even the premium stuff that's in here doesn't really feel like it's absolutely worth it. No like brand new skin or something like that for like a main character. That's relegated to this stuff, right? Where you actually do get brand new costumes on characters which are separate cost. So anyway, that's the big comparison between Street Fighter 6 and this one is that the battle passes are pretty under underwhelming. This one also is pretty shitty to me. We confirmed that the battle pass itself costs 600 coins, right? Nothing's actually really, really new in here. So let's buy 600 coins. Oh, it's the same problem. So this is just a common practice, like we have, have explained, that goes all the way back to the Xbox 360. You have to spend $10 to spend six dollars <laughs> man so that's what they're doing they want you to buy the battle pass and have enough money left over to get a costume i absolutely see but it's like not ideal dude this does not build like a good faith right already again as i was saying it to start this before we get into the crazy gameplay stuff that is going on to tekken 8 right now i feel like when tekken 7 was going on and people were asking for more content in, in the form of like costume dlc more customization items it was something that was effectively welcomed in games like soul Calibur, just because soul Calibur's customization has always been you know a huge part of it and it was like we're adding things over time and it's like okay people kind of were okay with that shit even in soul Calibur 5. it is neat that we're getting costumes for characters i think that is relatively okay that it's like all right they're eff effectively fulfilling what a lot of people wanted for the most part because the game is relatively generous with its costume offerings and its customization right out the bat don't get me wrong but what the hell is going on with battle pass cheapness in fighting games i don't get it it's like everyone wants to dabble in and try this thing but as soon as they do but we don't want to put that much effort into it is e effectively what it feels like where it's like we don't actually want to go all the way into this shit. I don't know, man. It's not $15 turtle costume offensive. It's not, but it's like everyone looks at what Fortnite is doing, you know, and tries to do a Fortnite thing, but Fortnite seemingly has like, from what I understand, and even have friends that are sort of like anti-battle pass and they buy into that shit because it seems worth it. <laughs> it relatively seems like, oh, I'll play enough to get that. I'm getting that shit in a game like that. So it's like, oh yeah, I, I understand where people are coming from. If you like this shit, you're going to do it. Either way, I, I think a, a sort of lame free pass and even not, not that great of a premium pass isn't a great start to beginning a battle pass for a Tekken game. This lasts two months by the way two months i'm not buying the fight pass just because there's nothing in it that seems really appealing for me i've already gotten eddie just because we've already gotten eddie that isn't even the beginning of it man because it feels like as i was explaining before from an outsider's perspective that the honeymoon phase for tekken 8 is over it's done people are fucking pissed kind of where the game is going balance wise has a huge amount of legacy Tekken players after the last like 24, 48 hours, pretty upset. Albeit, let's go back to what we talked about before. We have to like put us into perspective. We're in the first couple of patches of the game. We're getting an idea of where they're going from here. I've only put in a hundred hours, man. Guess what? 93 hours of that was no shit from the launch week and a half. This latest patch seems kind of wild. It was sort of hard to get an understanding of like where people are talking about this stuff, especially considering that there was already some weird bugs and some stuff happening. So one of the best videos I think we can bring up that I've already gotten uh, regarding this, and I've already uh, shown you his channel several times, chat. Uh, FDX has been making phenomenal content for Tekken all the way back to his Noctis days in Tekken 7 and has been a huge propagator for like Tekken 8 and helping people out. He's just incredibly well-spoken, fantastic content creator. Wanted to check out and just sort of like go over, he made a really great video going over the key elements. When this eventually goes up in YouTube, I'll link it down below so anybody can see it. But I, I think I we should check out some of the, the big stuff that's in here. Number one, I think a lot of us were naturally sort of positive about Tekken 8. That's the first few weeks, especially, where it's like, this game is mad fun. And I think most people will agree it is mad fun, but it will eventually get relatively like degenerate. You know, it's, it's a game that has ridiculously offensive bullshit all over the place. And there is characters that take advantage of that way better than others. 
So it was like, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna fine tune this stuff. We're in version one. We understand that. Maybe this balance patch will give us an idea of where this is actually going. Um, so let's let's get into the meat of it. Let's talk about system changes and character nerfs, which is the first topic. Highly recommend checking them out. Uh, very very strong player and combo artist, which is rare to have both, by the way. Anyways, look at this combo from Devil Jin. <laughs> the, the, the muted Devil Jin combo. Heat dash, Heaven's Gate. So this used to break the floor. From what I recall, uh, this used to be a floor break in the first week or so when I was playing the game. At least that's what I remember. Does not break the floor. Right. This, prior to the patch that we're on right now, used to break the floor. So in order to nerf this, the developers decided if you are in the grounded state, which for clarity. Yeah, that's after a uh, like a, a, an active heat dash, right? When you cash out all your heat gauge to run forward. Yeah, this heat dash, which happens after a heat burst. This is considered grounded. Dragonov on the left here is considered grounded, right? If you're in this state, stage hazards are now deactivated. And this was a targeted nerf for Devil Jin and probably some other characters. I believe Lily might have a similar uh, interaction. I'm not positive if they nerfed that. The point is, they wanted to nerf this Devil Jin interaction, and their choice of doing so was to nerf stage hazards as a whole. And this had many unintended consequences. So that might not be directly related to Devil Jin because there was certainly some other characters that were using it very well, right? Look at this Steve interaction on uh, Into the Stratosphere. Okay, the dude messes up the combo, resets. Okay, so the floor break that didn't would activate here. That would definitely break floor before. Anything that smashed into the floor in, in uh, final, final round uh, of this stage would cause the lava explosion. Right, the floor break didn't activate because Jin is grounded. But if you look at this situation, so he just shows it twice. It does activate. What the fuck? Now, technically, this does follow the rules, right? They did say that if you... Uh, they say in the patch notes that if you're still on a low wall hit, you're not considered grounded. The stage hazard is still active. But functionally, this is so similar, is it not? Now, the, the weird part is... Uh, well, let me cover some more situations, and then I'll talk about why I have a problem with this. Uh, here's a, more demonstrations with Huarong and Bears. <laughs> specifically okay, no no explosion on the floor here this used to explode the floor for an extended combo and now look at this huge combo he does even a tornado and then no explosion so the conclusion is that the moment you enter the grounded state which happens there wait what <laughs> i was gonna say the moment you enter the grounded state it uh deactivates the stage hazard but as you can see it appears there are inconsistencies and I believe in the code, it's probably consistent what is considered grounded and not. Huh. But as you can tell, there's already a clarity issue. We are... Yeah, why isn't it working all the time? Or, I mean, why, why is it even working anymore at all? Right? If you're taking it out, just take it out. Like, the competitive pro players are going to study this and understand it very in-depth. But the average... I mean, I, again, what he's saying is there's... If it doesn't work just on like a low wall splat, even if the wall's involved and then it suddenly works, that's weird as shit, dude. The fact that there's like a funky wall splat variable when it worked before is unless you're like studying the shit out of the game for somebody that is just trying to figure out, oh, I'm going to blow up the floor that didn't work. I'm going to blow up the floor this time. Why did it work? I did the same thing, like seemingly. It's it's odd why there would be a like a unless it is a low wall spot or like involves a wall fall or some weird shit. Like that's a weird decision. Average casual, are they going to understand the difference between that grounded state? Oh, there you go. Yeah, he's pretty much breaking it down. So it's like it's not RNG. No, 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 it's not. It's following a rule. The rule is making sense. It's just that it isn't well defined to a point where it's like easy to easy to pick up. Versus another grounded state where the legs are up sometimes. And it counts, <clears throat> but for this, state, it doesn't count. I don't think so. I think that creates a big clarity issue. 
All right, let's look at another situation. Yeah, I agree. In fact, I really uh, just just speaking from a regular perspective, um, th this this could be an oversight. It could be it could be friggin' weird. In in my in my eyes, I really enjoyed how easy it was to interact with wall interactables, with wall breaks, and with uh, ground explosions, right? Which are a new thing sort of in this one, where we can actively break the ground and everything just blows the hell up. Um, similar to Tekken 7, obviously. I really liked that. I thought it I thought it made sense and it was good. It just seemed like, whoa, we're just expanding all of the crazy floor breaking stuff that has been in the game since like Tekken 6. But now it's just way easier to do and it just makes sense and it's fun and boom, like it, effectively it was the crazy dead or alive bullshit that was always really cool in dead or alive. And now we're adding that to Tekken almost like it, to an nth degree where it's like, oh crap, it's everywhere now. Sick, let's go. To me, that was fun. It was legit enjoyable. If this effectively is a removal of that, then I just feel like it doesn't make the game bad, but I do feel that it would make the game less enjoyable. Oh, does this wall just not break anymore? So now oh, that we know the that would break before. That the grounded state caused by this back one on counter hit. Uh, Dude, how the hell do you even break this wall? Do you need to get a high wall splat now? Huh? Turns off the stage hazards. It makes sense. But I think this causes so many clarity issues for what makes the stage hazard huh, active. It's weird. It doesn't make a lot of visual sense. There are so many exceptions. And this is how Rest from Korea sums it up. I can understand Yeah, so I haven't played this since then. Are we, are we just saying that walls in general are much harder to break now? To me, that was cool, dude. It was one of the coolest things in Tekken 7 as well, right? I don't know. I, I think, I think the, uh, ultimately, if it's a balancing thing, and even an issue of like understanding where it's like, oh, I don't understand why it's not breaking. That's also a big problem. I think there's a bigger problem. It was fun. <laughs> I think there's a bigger issue overall. That was fun. I think most people kind of liked that. I don't understand why that would have, I think you should like balance it for, if, if it was some characters messing it up, they should have attacked the character, right? And just scaled it more or some shit. But to be real, that that definitely came across as like, oh, no, this is fun, dude. Like, this is a really cool part of this game. Why would we take the whole thing out? You know, that's that's Changing odd. Changing to new rules, but it's getting complicated. Uh, losing tradition is one way to frame it. The way I see it is it's just inconsistent. It's hard to know. Throw tracking. This is not the topic we're talking about, although I do agree with him. Um, some highs not being duckable. Not. Yeah, it's almost like counter like a, 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 a counter hypothesis to their whole game approach, which is like, you know, the aggression, the explosion, right? That this game's supposed to be aggressive and explosive. And that, that translates not just to the actual gameplay combat. It, it translates to environmental shit. So now if all the environments are harder to explode, it's like, I, I feel like the game's losing a little bit of the impact. Uh, just because of jailing, but on hit or on block. And then these ways of finding creative ways to create a stage hazard situation i think i'm hoping this wasn't intentional yeah i'm hoping this this goes back i really do again we're, tekken is at this this is one of the big ones i wanted to talk about the wall tornado bug is you know some weird unintended behavior stuff um but i this is a big one just in general because we're at an early state of tekken 8 early state so they're essentially testing stuff right now we are being used as uh effectively large-scale testers to how the game should be this happened several times during tekken 7 <laughs> several times there were several points of tekken 7 where they were effectively experimenting with shit to see how it goes and how do people react to this stuff it it and i'll tell you the worst what was the worst period in tekken 7 where they did this well Kind of the early versions, right? Where movement was really shitty and the way the game just operated was just a lot different. Uh, I'm saying not, I'm not saying don't, there definitely should be criticism here. I'm just saying that we're at an early state where it feels like they're just trying to figure out answers to this absolute wild game. And admittedly, Tekken 8 is a wild game with some characters that take advantage of the systems way more than others, much less even wall breaks and shit like that. 100%. It almost feels like this is an experimentation, but the weird part, here's the weird part. Mentioned it before I did, chat. 
Evo Japan is like three weeks away. <laughs> That's the weird part. Their effective largest major competitive tournament is about to go down. The first one, the first real big one. There's been a bunch of tournaments for Tekken 8 in the past few months, right? For sure. But the first actual large-scale multi-international tournament where it's really going to be the best of all worlds come together. Let's see what's actually freaking good in this game. It's pretty much going to be Evo Japan, where people are playing for a large sum, a very large sum of money. So to me, it's like, whoa, this is this is a massive change. Uh, you have to change the way you just think about utilizing the environment entirely. Better ways to nerf the stage hazards. You could have nerfed it by nerfing the character damage. You could is Tekken better than Street Fighter? Yes, you need to take your Street Fighter disc, uh, all the physical copies of Street Fighter that you have or you have ever purchased. I need you to find them put them all in a trash bag and shove that trash bag full of Street Fighter games up your ass. That's what you have to do. It has to go right up your ass. It's useless now. Or you eat it. You can, you eat the disc, you eat your physical copies. It's over. Street Fighter is done. Wait till Akuma comes out and then we'll have a reason to shove Tekken up our ass. Could have nerfed it by reducing the amount of damage the stage hazard itself does. There's also the argument- Digital that copies? The whole system, bro, I'm sorry. I hope you stretched of the strong aerial tailspin, one of the combo extenders that a lot of characters can do over and over again where you keep corkscrewing in the air. Right. Um, you could have nerfed any of those. But my main Yeah, this, this should have been an individual, this should have been individual character adjustments and not system-wide. Universal system changes, it makes it harder to understand the game, right? Because you build all this intuition about how the combo works, then you have to relearn that. And everybody has to relearn it. And it makes Tekken even more confusing than it already is. So, um, I really dislike how their approach to nerfing it was doing a system-wide change um, versus a specific character nerf. If this was the problem, Devil Jin, maybe Fang, specific issues, having this floor break issue, target nerf them, right? But changing all of these situations has unforeseen consequences and clarity issues for new players. All right. Now... This is related. They approached it from the philosophy of unintended behavior. Yeah, and we kind of talked about this, where this, this effectively, I don't think we need to go into this one too much, but this just removes combo creativity. This effectively just removes, this game has a ton of combo creativity, which I love about it, right? Not, not one single individual person is doing the exact same like combos, much less Tekken 7 was a wonderful game for that because the... Just, just the execution of things is hard, for sure. But also, the utilization of the environment to maximize every single touch. And we're starting to see that now, where it's like, oh, when you're good at this game, it's a two-touch game. You knock somebody into a wall and you get a full heat shit expansion on somebody, and then you hit them one more time, they are dead. But to get to that point, you needed the absolute most perfect sending them across the stage getting the perfect carry the perfect wall combo like it's really cool when that shit eventually does work out even though a two touch game does seem kind of crazy it isn't it isn't nearly as much of a game like i'd say tekken 7 ended up becoming at least as of right now but it's neat right i think it is generally kind of cool how how much combo creativity is in this game even in comparison to other games like tekken tag 2 it's not as crazy as tekken tag 2 but if we're talking about the pantheon of the Tekken series and how combo creativity sort of like lends itself to its natural systems, dude, Tekken 8 is easily the second best next to Tag 2. So yeah, it is a freaking bummer that this probably is a wonderful example of here, of that going away. But because they're grounded, you no longer get the floor break. It's situational, and sure, it did too much damage, but again, some creativity is nerfed. Uh, B. Bias, a Asuka specialist. Yeah, people will fight, figure out other things that will be different. No, don't get me wrong. People will figure out the next best thing. But ultimately, the way all the interactive environments worked before is now is now changed. You have to just you have to now place those things in different spots of the combo now, which is uh, which means that you're limited to doing it in that spot where you're no longer going to be able to utilize it in the end. Everyone's going to have to utilize it here when before there was a choice. It's effectively removing the choice, which is not cool, man. Found uh, that this no longer works. Uh, check this situation out. Off of while standing 1-4, you could do a micro dash and land um, land the heat smash. Right? But because of the grounded state here, oh, no. right, status down. That'd be so cool. This no longer breaks the floor. 
So this was a semi-creative option, right? It's not exactly super deep and difficult, but it was a semi-creative option that added some depth to the risk reward. And that's the idea is that there would be like some unique situations in here that would set up for some like kind of relatively cool looking stuff. And now they just might be gone. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look at this situation. Did you catch that? This is a unique Tekken animation that's been here for a while. Um, oh, I messed up. I hit a button on the on, on accident. Wait, wait, wait. Refresh. <clears throat> Look at this combo. That animation right there. Yeah, what is it? Um, the, the And this happens... It feels like this happens a lot more in this game than previous Tekken games, where you're essentially like facing uh face down facing the opponent right it, it leads to like weird get up situations where you can force somebody into like a tech and if they if they realize they're there you, you effectively get a free hit what is it face down feet towards or something like that yeah fdft weird weird tech and terminology for like because you you can effectively be in like a, a ton of different positions on the ground in Tekken and all of them affect how you get off the off the ground right and now face down feet toward is something that feels like face down ass up is something that feels like it happens way more in Tekken 8 just in general where it's like oh they're allowing that that's crazy it is spiked face up like this or face down is not tech rollable so Kazuya gets a guaranteed forward forward four but in this case because Momo Dog wakes up backwards he eats a forward forward three axe kick and gets relaunched. This is cool creativity. This is a unique situation. The combo only works on certain axes. And uh, it takes a lot of, I think, intuition. Oh, yeah. He has to, like, do this funky ass, like, sidewalk right by, like, a smidgen in order to get you it. You see how he does this sidestep right? There you go. He does a sidestep right to make Jin flip over. Or else it wouldn't work. Over, Devil Jin flip over to get the spike. This is cool combo expression to me. But because the strat was so overpowered on June, they've nerfed it out of the game completely. Oh, it's gone? In the current state of the game, this is how the spike ender works. Spike, you hold back and you get a tech roll. Oh, so now that's the answer to just hold backwards. Oh, weird. Yeah, okay, so if... if uh, uh, yeah, uh, tackling the whole game and seemingly in an answer to what a few characters are doing must have really pissed off the devs. That's all I, that's all I got to say is that must have really, really pissed off the devs. Like some, some of the ways people were playing this game must have been like, <gasps> like people were just fuming and they were just losing their goddamn mind that, oh no, what I was like, ah. One more time for demonstration. We're big mad. <laughs> Someone did it to a dev and they changed shit. Also something that does happen. <laughs> also something in the history of like, you know, fighting devs in a large variety of fighting games. Sometimes it isn't a great idea to play all your cards at the start, even, even in a level of development. Sometimes that's not a good idea. See that? So... A lot of creative situations from combo artists and people who have taken a lot of time to study the game um, are now gone. Well, that sucks. I really want to see this one because we can't do the, the entire thing. And I heard about this, uh, this funky shit, the wall tornado bug, which is like the you do a tornado at the wall and it doesn't wall splat for some reason in weird angles. And I remember this. This is seemingly or is this hot fixed? Is this one actually fixed? OK, good. So that's already like. Did he, does he mention that in here? Uh, this one might have already been fixed. Uh, hold on a second. Weird Azucena. Oh. No, I want to see the Lars thing, the casino thing. Hold up, hold up. Find games versus using the 3D aspect of the game. In the past, you can do sidestep block, sidestep duck, backdash duck to cover multiple options. Fighting games are all rock, paper, scissors. But the best players and the skill comes from managing the risk reward of each option. So you can skew the rock, paper, scissors in your favor. 
the more 50 50 a game is the higher variance it is the less damn dude special. is that what's happening uh so lars is becoming super good from one change i'm gonna tell you something chat i'm gonna tell you something that's making it increasingly difficult for me to enjoy tekken 8 on just a personal level um feels like every character i play is the most bitched about thing in the world Feels like every single time I jump back in and play this game and I, I try a brand new character that's either never been in Tekken or return to an old character of some some kind, uh, is the uh, every single thing I play is now the most bitched about thing in human history. And I started playing that like before we knew if they were good or not. I didn't care. So uh, it's such a fun feeling. <laughs> such a great feeling. I just got to say, um, I, I don't think there is any player base that hates their game more than Tekken players. I'm going to say it right now. As someone that has to be a around this community a bit more than usual, from the highest level to the lowest level, it feels like Tekken players hate their game. Uh, they like their characters, which is, which is again, a, uh, a very frequent topic of conversation when it comes to older Guilty Gear games, like OG Guilty Gear games, Guilty Gear X-Rod Rev 2. I don't know if it's the same for Strive, but OG Guilty Gear players definitely hated the shit out of everyone else on the roster for the most part, and they just love their character because everyone's so different. So it's like, oh, I hate the way everything else fucking plays, but I like mine. I like my character. Um, Tekken seems like it's just that, where there's so much character bitching, there's so much whining, I feel like I can't play anything without people just whining. I feel like I can't play, literally, I'm gonna have to play a fucking bear. The only thing you can do is play a bear. That's it. You play a bear, you're fine. There is. That's kind of the basics, right? One of the problems people have with throws being homing is you lose counterplay. It's either break the throw or duck, right? It's either break the throw or duck. Against King, though, for example, breaking the throw is really home that much. It's truly ambiguous. There are other examples, too, where um, if you are fighting a character with a back turn throw mix up, like, uh, like, and people hate bears. Back turn throws are truly ambiguous, wrong. like Fang, you lose the access to sidestep if you read it. It has to be a duck. And this reduces your ability to manage variants. Throws were definitely not homing in at least Tekken 7. I didn't play enough to tag too, but it didn't feel like throws homed where it's like you could walk around and just, <laughs> you just like glue grab to somebody. They were not. Okay. Because throws kind of just sucked ass in Tekken 7. I will say, I don't think that's exactly a bad thing just because they're trying to make throws relevant in Tekken again. It, it feel, it felt like well, just, let's just take out throws. <laughs> like for the most part in, in Tekken 7, as you got better at the game, it just sort of felt like, well, this just, this mechanic is just fucking useless. Um, now it's sort of like, yeah, they're making them more Soul calvary, y right? To a certain degree. I don't know. I sort of, I sort of dig the way throws currently are in the game. It feels like they're actually somewhat effective to a certain degree. Now, the reason why this is relevant is not necessarily because they made a change about throws. I want to talk about the Lars Dynamic 3, Dynamic Entry 3 change. Here we go. So, the one character I play. Oh, good. And yes, L Lars Den 3 was one of his best moves. Uh, I played him for literally one day in ranked. We got to like Siryu or something like that. And at the end of that day, I was like, what should I be doing on Oki? And I effectively was like, dude, why am I not? This is before Lars was like really figured out. This is like a month and a half ago, right? Um, I need to be doing four, three, three, because he does this like jumping kick thing. And I seemingly can do like whatever I want after. It's like the best Oki tool. So I started doing that as soon as people woke up because it seemed to lock on and was pretty good. And it was like, all right, this is this seems pretty dang good, man. And afterwards, you could, uh, you know, get a low, you can get the paunch, you can get a bunch of shit. So let's let's see what happened. I have the PS5 edition of the game still unpatched. So Ooh. give me one moment to switch over to that. Um, yeah, and, and uh, do, don't get me wrong. Did I think Lars needed buffs or anything like that no i i'm like this character has so much shit that i don't even think any of us are fully fully firmly grasping it as of right now he's got so much crazy transitional bullshit that is also very easily interrupted like down forward one fucks up lars really hard in this game all right ps5 version unpatched this is before the update that's what unpatched means right come on fdx when lars does dynamic entry three he is plus three on block. 
Okay. What this means in the past right. is that you were able to sidestep left most of his moves after the stance. I messed up. I'm playing off my OBS monitor, so there's a lot of latency. Okay. That's my excuse for the day, okay? But uh, look at this. So silent entry one is sidesteppable to the left. The low is sidesteppable. I'm not a Brian player. That's not how you punish that. And then the other mid is sidesteppable as well. How did Lars counter this? How did Lars counter this? Lars countered this. The, le the le electric feet. Yeah. With that. Yeah, Silent yeah. yeah. I, ran in, I ran into this situation. Silent entry 3 plus 4 would track your sidestep to the left. That was a funny wall situation. Yeah. So this. And electric feet were safe. I, I don't think it's even stand one punishable. It was just good. Everything he gets out of that situation is, is very good. So you just wanted to do it as Lars almost every single time you knocked him down. Followed, even though it was kind of a free mix up, this does follow a lot of the traditional rules of Tekken where not many mix-ups are truly free in this sure. game. In this game, you have to earn your ability to go mid and low. So if your opponent knows about the sidestep left option, you play the homing option. If they decide to respect this option, right, they don't want then to it comes back. while you're sidestepping. Right, then, then you can get away when, when you know that they can do it. The mind game changes. Everything about Tekken eventually boils down to being rock, paper, scissors because... The, one of the three options is going to win. Now you regain access to this mix-up because they're standing still. Yep. And that's the layered mind game of Tekken that comes from the 3D aspect. For sure. That's also a thing that is extremely prominent throughout all of Virtua Fighter. Just to throw it out, the, the, the RPS in Virtua Fighter, in comparison to Tekken, even at a low level, I'll say it right now, Virtua Fighter shoves that shit in your face so frequently. Where it's, it, you almost wonder like, oh, VF and Tekken look like very similar games on, on, on the outside. How are they any different? Until you start to play a little bit more VF and you start to see like where the options are and how the options present themselves to you. Dude, holy crap, dude. Virtual Fighter shoots that shit at you almost like three times as much that Tekken does. Tekken's like every once in a while. Virtual Fighter's almost every goddamn engagement. It's nuts. So it's like, yes, you are effectively doing RPS RPS inherently isn't exciting. Don't get me wrong. I don't think games that have natural rock, paper, scissors, like we're sticking it here, we're sticking it there. Like some, for example, the worst one is Marvel versus Capcom 3. I'm gonna say it right now. People found ways around it for sure. But in Marvel 3, TACs, where you can launch a character up and then send another character in after, you had to choose from up, down, or sides. And that was fucking it, dude. <laughs> that was it. What was like the crazy goddamn mind game behind it? There, there, people eventually found some counterplay to some situations for sure, but there was no mind game. Like it was designed where you just choose one of three options, good luck. And there is things attached and mechanics attached to each one for sure. But that was the, that was it. So to me, it's like a very intentional rock, paper, scissors situation where it's just like, all right, we're up here now. Let's just see if I'm going to eat shit or not. Why did they change this? In the patch notes, again, very much appreciate the developer clarity. They patched this because if you were in rage and Lars did a move, you have to set him to do a move, VDX. Um, if Lars did his fastest move, silent entry one, you could rage art. And Lars had no way to get out of this. Okay. So they thought Lars but should be able to do dynamic entry three without eating rage art. Why? Yeah, I remember reading this in, in, the, in the patch notes. Why? Why is that a problem? Number one, why is that a problem? I'm, I'm a, I, I, I have played Lars a little bit, right? Knowing that they have fucking super, they have rage art. So why would you do it? Why would you commit yourself to a stance? Lars has a billion other options. He does not have to. He does not have to go for that. That that move forward. Uh, what is it? Den three, right? Dash forward, press three. Big kick thing is amazing. He's using it all the time, right? It's genuinely one of his hero moves. So you're seeing it for eighty percent of the life bar, man. You're seeing it for like eighty percent of the time. Lars is on screen doing shit. Why is it a problem that it's suddenly not great for the last 15, 20%? That seems very weird to me, if that, if that was the reasoning behind it. The consequence of this change, so what they did is they made Lars's uh, dynamic entry three instead of plus three, it's now plus five, so you cannot rage art out of this. As a consequence of this change though, 
in the latest patch, you can no longer sidestep that option. So, so now, shit. off of this homing, advancing, plus frame kick that's jumping, so it's unparryable, you have to just guess, mid or low. It is the... <laughs> If the move wasn't homing, if it started off as like not homing, but it clearly has like the big homing blue line thing, right? Then it would probably be fine, but you can't like get the hell out of the way. It's a mid. This will probably be changed to a high. I'm going to say it right now. This move will likely be changed to a high over time. Even though it looks like a mid, don't get me wrong. Like, look at this move. You have to just guess, mid or low. Like, this will probably be changed to a high. I wouldn't be surprised. I think that's probably the answer. Right? If they keep it this way, for some reason, if for some fucking reason, you know, the doing a rage art after locks him in, big deal. But there needs to be, yeah, the whole point of second is that there needs to be a moment where you can get out of the way. And that's... That is effectively where the skill of Tekken resides, just overall, right? People are like, oh, man, how do you get good at Tekken? And I, I keep telling people this, you have to play the fuck out of the game. You have to play the fuck out of the game and get, and get hit by so much weird shit and understand what you have to do about it. There, you can duck things, you can sidestep left, you can sidestep right, you can interrupt. Like, everything has effectively, it's sometimes five to seven options, what you can do, especially in Tekken 8 with power crushes and shit, right? So you just need to find out what it is. Some, some things have multiple options. Don't get me wrong. Some things have multiple things you can do. Some things are so good where it's just, you just sidestep left, <laughs> right? Sidestep left at the, the right time. That effectively has been the way Tekken has worked most of the time. But there has been some weird shit in Tekken 8, like, I don't know exactly how King's run works, where he, like, you know, does some fucking thing, and he's, like, points at my ass, and he runs at me, and I, I feel like I'm out of a lot of options. I don't know if that's a similar, if that's a similar situation, where maybe, maybe that's a, another example of people complaining, but I don't know exactly how King king's run works i know how this shit works that's for sure and all this is doing is preventing you from getting out of the way now you effectively have to guess the low guess the mid or guess the two mids right right something like that i don't know i don't know um it has deleted the complexity <clears throat> that i that knee was kind of talking about here as a 3d game you have many options. You can reduce the risk reward in your favor. And it was clear that Tekken was already trying to do this in general. You know, like the majority of things you get heat dashed on and it feels like a 50 50. Uh, if some character's like running at you and you just have to like eat the goddamn heat dash, the game presents those situations m more frequently than any other Tekken. Favor. Or reduce the risk and increase the reward in your favor. Now he has insane access to a free mix up. Because of the Rage Art change. Yeah. <clears throat> Seems like an oversight. And I agree. It's a bit of an oversight. And it really feeds into... I didn't think Tekken was super casino. I think some characters had access to that. But these kinds of changes are really pushing it that way. It's becoming more true. I, I wanted to disagree. But I'm struggling to disagree. I'm struggling to disagree with it. Now, you can't sidestep. You have to guess. I think only Lily can sidewalk it to the left. And in, in reality, it's like, how insane does this make Lars as a character? How insane does it make him? What's his reward? I mean, you just block high and eat the shitty low. For the most part, right? Uh, it, it does a mid. He either can do the mid or he can do the launcher. I can't, I'm trying to think of what the other options are. But does it make him an absolute god-tier character? I think other characters do much better shit than that. Is the low plus on hit? I'd have to check. I don't know. It might be, it might be like maybe negative two or something like that. But... I'm trying to think of the other shit that would make Lars really godlike. Because Lars got some funky normals in yeah. this game. This is tough. This is tough for Tekken. This really if the low is plus, then yeah, obviously that sets up for a real shit situation. The low is minus 12 on block. I'm going to call it right now. Does this, th is this going to essentially elevate Lars into top tier? Because he was already mid. 
Um, having a true 50-50 is insane. For sure. Don't get me wrong. True 50-50 is insane. I will just throw it out here. And it definitely, this, this absolutely breaks Tekken, right? This effectively breaks the Tekken dynamic of what Tekken is. Don't get me wrong. But I have played several games where they boil down to 50-50 shit. 50-50 shit all over the fucking place. Locking you into 50-50 shit. It would seem like that game would become an actual casino where anybody can win anything at this point, where it's like, God damn, dude, how is anybody supposed to control this whole game as 50-50s? How are we supposed to even play this shit, right? Oh no, turns out the best players are still the best players. 100%. Best players are still the best. 50-50s are, seem like they're the most baneful shit in the world. They're the most, like, goddamn godforsaken thing ever. But when you get used to it, they're not that bad. <laughs> it's bullshit in Tekken. It genuinely is bullshit in Tekken. But we've already played several fighting games. MKX is obviously a big one. That puts you in, that forces players into that situation to make that goddamn guess. Um... And realistically, you'd be shocked that the really good players still remain the really good players because of situational awareness. And it, it feels like, again, at a mid to low level, I'm going to throw it right now, this, this only affects, like, you're not one of them. Almost any of you people that are watching this, any, anybody that's watching this right now, so few of you might think you're one of them, you're not one of them. This is affecting such a small percentage of people why can I confidently say that? Because Tekken already feels like it's 50-50 the fighting game. It's not. To people that have put thousands of hours in, they know it's not because they know where to move. But in reality, this Tekken is the ultimate 50-50 game. What is the most frequent complaint in Tekken? How do I block the lows? How do I react to the lows? And it's like, well, that's the thing. <laughs> You know, this is this is where there's a conversation to be had here. So all I'm saying is that, you know, there there should be relative that this doesn't make sense for Tekken. It doesn't. But seemingly, do I think this is the absolute this is the end of the world? I don't think it's the end of the world. I don't think it also launches Lars into goddamn stardom. Uh, I think his weird usability in this game limits that to a certain degree other characters are just so much more fucking simple and get so much better reward than lars does in general um i i think it definitely is a trend that seems scary and i can understand with the highest level of tekken because this won't even affect me that much to be real i think at the highest level of tekken this is scary because to them these really really small details that boil down to this one situation and maybe some other situations that are kind of similar represent a trend that is in the, well, we should be able to avoid shit, right? We should 100% be able to move the fuck out of the way. So how would I, if, if they are really that upset about Lars getting rage arted, which doesn't make any goddamn sense, make the fucking move a high. Make Den 3 a high. That's my answer. Ports a lot of the flame it's been getting about being a casino game. I want to talk about the weird Azusena balance decision. Um, yes, and, and, and again, why are Tekken 8 players like this? Because Tekken players have been more critical on what developers are doing with Tekken, with quote-unquote, the purity of Tekken gameplay ever since Tekken 7. And this was a very, very frequent thing where it, I, I remember hearing this constantly from high-level Tekken players. What the hell are the devs doing? Do the devs even know how Tekken plays? That element happened several times during Tekken 7's patching process, where, where Tekken fans are like, dude, do these guys even play their own game? That kind of like mentality was all over the place, dude, where they were like, a lot, a lot of players think that they have a, ha a handle of the situation way more than what the developers do. So again, this, I, I think a lot of Tekken 7 players seeing this comes across as scarier because there's already an inherent, I'd say little bit of bad faith with the developers in general of Tekken just on like a fundamental level of where people have been more critical of Tekken balancing for the past like seven years or something like that for this we're going to open up a few tweets and then I'm going to open up the PS5 section again oh so I, okay before we even get into this shit um 
I'm going to say, and I noticed this when it was on the show. I'm going to, I will just going to make a call that what this is about. When you sidestep Azu Senna now, which is easily sidesteppable, right? She does her big lunging 3 2. Uh, when she lunges forward now and it whiffs, that chick flies like a jet. She's hella far. She's like way out there. So it, it might as well be safe if you sidestep it. I noticed this when they were doing the demonstration and I'm like, how am I supposed to punish that with any of my characters? <laughs> I looked at it where it's like, whoop, see you later, bitch. Let me get you. Oh, man. She's like a whole screen away. <laughs> what the hell? So I'm assuming that's what it is. Give me one moment. <laughs> I get like 30 minutes of my voice and then it's gone. Yeah, okay. maybe you can demon Paul. You're, you're not getting a launcher, right? What they've changed with Azucena in the latest patch is if she whiffs while running, while running three, the, the elbow never comes Whoa, out. Oh, damn, bro! Right? Which seems good. They also reduce the active frames of her knee down to one frame. So it's actually easier to sidestep. Instead of having like four or five active frames, she only has one active frame on her jumping knee. Jesus, so one is active frame. So even if you're like minor sidestepping, like barely sidestepping, that shit is flying past you now. One active frame, that's a huge nerve. It's a lot easier to do without getting clipped. But as you can see, they fly so far away. How are you going to whiff punish that? In the past, in the... Uh, let's open up the PS5 version again. Paul can past, probably you, death fist her right in the ass. You would do. I'll just pick Azusena here and re-record. <coughs> oh my goodness. What you would do in the past is you would sidestep left and duck. And because of the way her push box is interacted with you, you would still get a really nice launch punish here. So I'm just going to record this. I didn't here. successfully do this shit once, right? I tried. People told me what to do. I tried so many times. I couldn't get it to work fucking once against Azu Senna's that were literally spamming it. So I don't, the, the strategy was like sidestep and then duck or something like that. And I, I am like, am I just super bad? No, it this game was, I'm sorry. This move was legit fucking good. Again, this was, this was like a month and a half ago that I was playing. So check Tekken has changed a lot. Here, the option is just sidewalk left duck and she's right in front of you still. Made it look mad easy. Right? And yes, <laughs> it's like a micro left, right? To sidewalk left duck. No, it's a big step. Change the active frames. You could get this situation more often and get a really clean launch punish. None of the stuff where she flies way past you, right? But if you try this, I mean, literally, we just saw it. Most of the time now, she flies so far away, it's sometimes not possible to get the punish. And even if you try the same movement, I tried the same movement with sidewalk left duck, and uh, she still it flies won't work so anymore. far away. Sometimes it's stable, and she's not close. active. Sometimes she doesn't. It's created inconsistency for having the right read, which again is a bit more casino. Okay, so we talked about the Azucena balance decision. Eddie ah, those are the big ones. And we already know Eddie's looking very good, but we'll see. It's like, as much as Eddie has some really good shit on him right now, and we've sort of like gone over a little bit with Yo! Video Games because Kenny and Steve are playing the character. Um, Eddie does seem really good. But it, it's almost like he seems good, maybe in comparison to pretty previous Eddies, for sure. But in comparison to what's actually good in Tekken 8 right now, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like we've seen some some pretty fucked up shit on some characters in this game, like already. So how how good he'll be overall is like he does seem really good, man, and he's a lot different, but who who knows if he's really is he now two Dragonoffs duct taped together? That's uh that's definitely up in the air. I don't know about that. Eddie is looking OP, and I, I hate making knee jerk reactions to brand new characters or brand new patches. Okay. You can't even use replay against them without buying? Damn, that's a good call from the devs. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> right? Just in general? Uh, what, a, what a great call from the devs <laughs> to get you to buy the character. Wow, dude. One step in the other direction of buy the frame data. That's like one step where it's like, hey, I'd like to know how this works. Give us a few bucks <laughs> in the same way where it's like, hey, I'd like to know how to fight against this character. I don't even want to buy him. Well, buy him anyway. <laughs>